assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to your new class o level 10 through the youtube channel of multan public school and college for boys and girls this is cambridge biology 5090 and i am your teacher ms kulsum fatma today we are going to discuss chapter 17 microorganisms and their applications in biotechnology let's see the learning objectives of this chapter by the end of this video you should be able to list the main characteristics of the following that is viruses bacteria and fungi and then you should also be able to outline the role of microorganisms in decomposition dear students sit with me to understand what are microorganisms microorganisms or microbes are minute living things that are usually unable to be viewed with the naked eye we can only see them with the help of either a hand lens a compound or light microscope or with the help of electron microscope bacteria fungi protozoans for example amoeba alga viruses these all are examples of microorganisms let's compare the relative size of microorganisms as you can see the frog egg is 1 mm in diameter much larger then the human egg and the pollen grain animal and plant cells their size ranges from 10 micrometer to 100 micrometers the mitochondria and bacteria which are 1 micrometer in size may appear as a small dot in the light microscope but the detailed structure of bacteria viruses and mitochondria and other cell organelles was only possible by discovery of electron microscope i am sure you are excited about today's lecture so let's not wait and start the characteristics of virus viruses are a cellular particles that is they are not made up of cells they are on the borderline between living and non living world since they do not have many characteristics that a living organism possesses they have a protein coat around the nucleic acid in the center which is their core this nucleic acid is either dna or rna molecule outside the host they are crystalline in structure and they reproduce only inside their host that is they replicate and do not undergo cell division they are parasites they feed on the living host they are not present in the dead body remember that viruses they are parasites so they always cause diseases in human beings animals and plants different types of viruses like hiv virus hepatitis virus bacteriophage influenza viruses these all are famous do you know which is the most famous virus these days can you please think oh yes that is the covid-19 virus people from all over the world suffer from different viral diseases like chickenpox polio which often affects the leg of children and tobacco mosaic virus which cause disease in tobacco plant bacteria like other microorganisms they are found in every habitat on the earth in the soil in the air and water including human beings either on their body or inside their body they may be harmful or they may be harmless certain bacteria they are pathogens and cause diseases in human beings animals and plants the bacteria are the prokaryotic microorganisms because their genetic material that is dna is not present inside the nuclear envelope most bacterial cell walls contain peptidoglycan which is a complex molecule bacteria have different shapes The common shapes include the spherical or the coccybacteria, the rod shape or the bacillus, or the curve shape, that is the vibro, the spirillum, or the spirochete. Remember that bacteria are unicellular organisms. Their cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan or murine molecule, which is a complex molecule. There is no true nucleus. and only a single circular strand of dna is present which is called nucleoid additional small rings of dna are also present which are known as plasmids 
these plasmids are used in biotechnology and genetic engineering the bacteria may be autotrophs that is prepare their own food by photosynthesis they may be heterotrophs that is either they are parasites obtain the food from other living organisms or they are decomposers that is obtain food from dead organic matter bacteria may be aerobic or anaerobic now you can see that they have a structure no which is known as pellus with the help of these pili they are able to attach to any body the flagellum helps to move the bacteria from one place to another coxi bacteria do not have any flagella so they are not able to move with the help of flagellum bacteria reproduce both by sexual and asexual method in the case of sexual method since two different types of bacteria are involved exchange of genetic material takes place so in this way the two different bacteria produced they have different dna and they are variations in them whereas in the case of asexual reproduction a single bacteria divides into two within 20 minutes if the conditions are favorable that is food is available proper temperature is there ph is there so within 20 minutes the bacteria will divide into two which is known as binary fission the asexual reproduction is also known as binary fission so the two daughter cells they are similar to the parent cell some heterotrophic bacteria cause diseases in human beings for example diarrheal disease cholera typhoid plague tetanus tuberculosis or tb whooping cough pneumonia pneumonia is the inflammation of the lungs that is caused by bacteria sometimes viruses and sometimes chemical irritants they are also the cause of pneumonia in this disease the air sacs fill up with pus and other liquids and the person has difficulty have you ever thought why your food is spoiled and why we often suffer from food poisoning so bacteria are one of the major cause for this because these can withstand boiling freezing and extremely dry conditions because of a thick cell structure known as endospore that forms inside the cell if a bacteria forms an endospore it can survive for many years because it has the nuclear material and certain some uh, cytoplasm inside when it gets the favorable environment it grows into a new bacteria and cause diseases in that living organism bacterial diseases can be treated by antibiotics like urinary tract infection sore throat whooping cough whereas the viral diseases like flu bronchitis common cold it can never be treated with antibiotics whereas pneumonia if it is uh, caused by bacteria then it is treated with antibiotics ear infections if caused by bacteria it can be treated with antibiotics but if the cause for pneumonia and ear infection are the virus then obviously it can't be treated with antibiotics fungi are eukaryotic or microorganisms such as yeast molds as well as the most familiar mushrooms some of these mushrooms are edible some are highly poisonous which can kill a person by eating a single mushroom so be careful by while you are eating these mushrooms so these organisms they are classified as a kingdom that is we say that kingdom fungi it is separate from the other eukaryotic kingdoms of animals and plants let's study about uh, the characteristics of fungi certain fungi are unicellular for example yeast have you ever heard about yeast oh yes the famous yeast which is used in the pizzas there are multicellular fungi these multicellular fungi they are made up of thread like structures which are like filaments and they are that is known as mycelium they have a true nucleus a true nuclear envelope is present outside the dna molecule the cell wall is made up of chitin which is a complex carbohydrate it is very much stronger and flexible 
the fungi they reproduce by budding and spores uh, they have absorptive mode of nutrition they secrete uh, certain enzymes that is why we say that they do extracellular digestion with the help of protease amylase and maltose multicellular fungi the body is made up of thread like structures which are known as hypha these hypha they may be the feeding hypha that is these enter inside the body of the living organism where these produce or secrete certain enzymes like proteases which digest proteins into amino acids the amylase is digest the starch to maltose and the maltase enzyme digests the maltose to glucose molecule whereas the lipases they digest the fats into fatty acids and glycerols so in this way they are helping in decomposition as well as they are absorbing only a very small amount of food energy there are certain erect reproductive hypha which have a sporangium at the top inside that sporangium there are spores these spores when they fall in the suitable environment they grow in new fungi dears have you ever thought that the favorite mushrooms the butter mushrooms that we eat in the pizzas and other bakery items they also belong to kingdom fungi why do we eat them because they are a rich source of proteins yes the body is made up of thread like structures which is known as hyphae i either it is the stalk or the umbrella shaped cap they are made up of thread like structures hypha fungi are not only beneficial for us but they also cause diseases in in human beings for example dandruff and ring two nail disease and potato blight disease are also caused by fungi also reproduce by asexual and sexual method in the case of asexual method the mycelium produces spores and the spores germinate to form a new mycelium in the case of sexual reproduction haploid cells from two different mycelia they fuse to form a heterokaryotic cell that heterokaryotic cell the nuclei inside them they fuse to form a diploid zygote which is 2n that zygote undergoes meiosis and haploid spores are formed these haploid spores then germinate and a multicellular mycelium is decomposers are saprotrophs that break down dead organic matter into simpler substances these saprotrophs or the decomposers that include fungi and certain bacteria especially those one that live in the soil digestive enzymes are produced by the uh, fungi and they break down organic matter the complex organic matter into simpler substances like glucose amino acids fatty acids and glycerols inorganic salts are also released from organic compounds these saprotrophs that is the bacteria and fungi they absorb only a small amount of energy and nutrients for their own use the remaining is released into the surrounding soil air and water so it is available to the plants so in this way the decomposers they form the link between the living organisms and the non living environment if during decomposition oxygen is lacking incomplete decomposition results into peat now let's study about the uses of decomposition in humus formation dead matter in the soil decays to form a sticky black liquid in fermentation in anaerobic decomposition of carbohydrates to alcohol lactic acid or acetic acid is produced in putrefaction decomposition of proteins under anaerobic conditions produces a false smell a sewage disposal here the sewage is reduced to harmless substances by aerobic bacteria and fungi the one of the main important use of decomposition is that it recycles the nutrients so in this way the nutrients are available in the soil again and they are reused by the plants decomposition also prevents unsightly accumulation of dead remains on the earth 
Students, surf the net to explore the answers of the following. Question number one, viruses are disease causing organisms. Do you think they are useful to some extent? If yes, please write down the answer. If no, write down the answer. Question number two, find out how sewage treatment plants are speeding up decomposition process. Question number three, list names of at least two diseases caused by virus, bacteria and fungi in humans, animals and plants. Students, remember to stay online and at home. Eat healthy and exercise regularly. I appreciate your support and commitment towards e-learning environment. Thank you and good luck.